I'm Tanya Fox, and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world, but always played to my own tune and loved to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses, so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. So thank you so much for coming on the show today, Aurora. I'm so excited to speak with you. Well, likewise, Tanya, and I'm looking forward to helping your audience write their book. Yes. So this has been, you know, we were talking a little bit about this off air and, uh, you know, I definitely want to get into this, but before we get into, you know, writing a book, who should do it, tell us a little bit about your background and sort of how you got to here. Okay. Well, like many would-be authors, I have always been passionate about books. I remember, you know, when I was nine years old reading C.S. Lewis's Narnia series, and that changed my life. And I thought, oh, nothing could be cooler than being an author when I grow up. That's what I want to do. But when I finally got to university, I went to the University of British Columbia, which you probably know being a fellow Canadian. Um, After first year, I told my dad very proudly, okay, I know what I want to major in. I want to major in English and literature. He's like, pfft. Don't be ridiculous. Do something (laughs) sensible. So I did. And I went into business instead. But many years later, I found a way to combine the two and to both be in business and to write books, to be a creative entrepreneur. So what I'm really passionate about is that don't let your dreams be stillborn just because somebody gives you advice that they think is good. There's so many things that have changed, so many ways that we can live the life of our dreams, whether you want to be an author or a creative entrepreneur or fill in the blank, whatever you want to do. I'm a stand for, hey, let's figure out a way that you can actually do it. Because we hear that so much, right? We hear like, don't do that. There's no money in that. Yeah. But really... You know, I think it is uh, good to have an eye on the money because if you are losing money, you won't be able to do it very long. And then it's, it's a hobby and it's something that you're subsidizing. So I think it is, my philosophy is, or my observation is when we add value to the world, unless we have a kink in our receiving hose, it will generate revenue. So um, when somebody says that don't do that, there's no money in it, it just means that they don't know how to make money doing that. But if, if anybody on the planet has ever done it, you know, they are the people to ask and you don't always have to ask the person in person. They could even be passed on. They could be dead. You can read their books and you can, you can pull on the thread of how the heck did they do that and find a way that works for you. You know, what works, you and I have a lot in common. (laughs) What works for me is combining creativity with entrepreneurship and to, um, you know, write books. I love writing books. I love helping other people write books. And I've found a way that works, that plays to my strengths and my joys, which I can tell you more about. But it's not about following Aurora's recipe that works for Aurora. It's about, you know, what is your massively transformative purpose? What are you curious about? What do you do on the weekend when you're camping in your tent in your front yard? What books are you reading, right? There's a clue to the things that you're interested in and make a list of, you know, two dozen things that you're interested in and then make a list of, you know, what problems would you like to solve? These could be world scale problems or they could be neighborhood scale problems. And I did that after taking my MBA. And when I just, you know, uh, dumped out a bunch of things on a piece of paper, it's good to write it down uh, that I was curious about. And then I looked for patterns. I'm like, oh, I'm interested in podcasts. I'm interested in stand up comedy. I'm interested in movies. I'm more interested in, in screenplays. I'm interested in poetry. I'm interested in books. I'm interested in book marketing. I'm interested in. TED Talks and communication. And then I was interested in a few other things like, you know, revitalizing health, da, da, da. But when I looked at my list, I'm like, 80% of these things are in the communication arena. That's what I am fascinated by. That's what I'm driven by. 
I love fiction. I love nonfiction. And when I, then when I looked at the pr problems I want to, okay, so pause or work. So anybody can do this. Anybody can make a list of the things that they're curious in. This is so helpful. It can be such a roadmap for your book, your business, your life, your massively transformative purpose. And then second step, make a list of a dozen or so problems that you'd like to solve and then see where those things overlap. And if you get enough things overlapping, you will be absolutely thrilled when you'll say, people actually pay me to do this. I would do it for free, right? So I love helping people build businesses. I love helping people come up with innovative ideas and communicate those ideas in a way that others can understand. I love helping people write their books, publish their books, market their books. These things all fill me with joy. So, um, you know, if you've got a book on your heart, what kind of book do you want to write? Why do you want to write it? Connect with how it could solve problems for others and start writing. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think, you know, we were talking about, you know, earlier off air, we were talking about, you know, so many times I would, you know, meet up with other entrepreneurs and, you know, they would say, you know, I have this idea for writing a book, but who am I? You know, yeah. I haven't like, you know, I'm not on center stage. I'm not, you know, Hollywood worthy. They would say like, who's going to read my book, right? And I'm thinking, I will, your story sounds like awesome and interesting, right? But I think there's that a lot of people hit that sort of roadblock. So what would you say to somebody who's like, I think maybe I have something? <laughs> I would say you can drop the think, you do have something. <laughs> and I, this is where we really sabotage ourselves because we look at somebody 20 years into their career and they say, oh, they've got multiple TED Talks. They've done this. They've done that. They've got a New York Times bestselling book. They've got a dozen books. They've got this huge platform. They've got a seven or eight figure or nine figure business. And we look at that and we go like, well, I just might as well give up now and <laughs> not start. I'm not but there. If, yeah. <laughs> if, you, if, you were, if you look at their beginnings, how did they get known? How did they get on stage? Usually the easiest way for anybody to do that is to write a book because the root of the word authority is author. And anybody can write a book, but so few people do. And when you take the time to um, clarify what it is that you want to say, and you take the time to put it into a book, people go, oh, Tanya's got something to say about collaboration. Let's get her on the podcast. Let's get her on, you know, the, the TV. Let's have her come and speak. Let's have her do a training on Zoom. Let's have her do a training in person. And then one thing leads to another as Tanya becomes more and more famous with potentially, you know, collaboration for your business, a guide to growth or something, some kind of title like that. Then you become the collaboration woman. And, and you're not only Tanya with multiple businesses and a great podcast and a great energy, you're the go-to queen for collaboration. And, and then it builds. So we need patience. Whatever we want to build, we need patience. I think books are like babies. You are, usually it's good to be pregnant with the idea for maybe about nine months. And even though your book's not published yet, something's alive in you, something's unfolding, something's happening. So my challenge for everybody um, is to my 90 day challenge. You can read my book and find the details in it, or you can just do it from listening to this podcast is for 90 days, read every day. It could be five minutes, write every day. Again, it could be five minutes. And then once a week, review what you've written. So I call that radical reading, radical writing, and radical review, just because I like the RR. Mm -hmm. um, and I do really invite you, the radical part is I invite you to actually read a soft cover book because we are prone to be interrupted when we're reading on our devices and it also fatigues our eyes. And then it's not as easy for you to write in the margins and put yellow sticky tags all over it. Oh my gosh, so much. That's, that's <laughs> me when I read, like I was like, anybody who borrows a book knows you're getting all my notes, you're getting all my little sticky tabs, you're getting, you're getting highlight and you're getting like, you know, all my subscript. <laughs> well, that makes the book even more valuable, right? I think so too. Absolutely. Yeah. And I, I write, I do that too. And I have to write really small because I have so many freaking notes. <laughs> but, you know, when I did that, I, uh, I was floored by how many of my prayers were answered. 
because you, you might not notice in the busyness of a day and you, you know, kind of write a problem and you write a, a prayer or an intention for a wish for a solution, whatever words work best for your belief system. Um, but if you don't review, you won't notice that 60 days later or 90 days later, something miraculous unfolded and boom. I, you know, I would, ex I would, I would bet you'll have to let us know, Tanya, but I listened to a couple of your podcasts and I listened to one that you were, you know, you're working on your book. And I bet that there's something in your energy field that you're sending out. Hey, I'm working on a book. I, I universe support me. <laughs> and then I show up on your podcast, right? I think the universe supports us when we have something alive in us. So it's, and also I want to bust the myth that you need to take a month off in a cabin by yourself to write your book. The best way to write your book is the same way as growing a baby a little bit every day. Yeah. And I love that because I think, yeah, I I've heard that before, like go away. And, and I'm thinking, no, <laughs> <laughs> because what I found, especially because like, you know, and I'm just I'm throwing out my own experience, but what I found is because I was writing a business book, I was like, I almost need to be in it because I forget yeah. those questions or those things that people are constantly asking me. And that was my inspiration of me going. Now I started like when I really started thinking about it, then I was like, I need to write this down because to me, it's a no brainer. Right. And I'm like, yeah. well, just, of course you would do that. But then I realized that's not necessarily a no brainer to somebody else. Who's like, wait a minute, how did you get from point A to point B? Like, can I have a little bit of some directions here exactly. to, get to, your, to get to that point? <laughs> exactly right, Tanya. And that's why people tend to dismiss what they know because they know it, or they tend to dismiss their areas of genius because it's easy for them, right. but it's not easy for others. Like, you know, communicating is easy for me. I've been studying it for years, but it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a talent. It's a strength. And maybe because I've been studying it for years. So other people, you know, one of my clients are talking to me and they're like, oh, what's the title? What's the subtitle? And I just instantly come up with some things. I'm like, how do you do that so fast? And thank God this is being recorded because there were multiple ideas there and I want to have them all. Um, it's like, you know, you tap into something. So for the people who are considering writing a book, whatever your, whatever's easy and fun for you is probably what the book is going to be about. The other thing I really want to, the other myth I want to bust is that the author of the book needs to be also the word wrangler. It is a stiff, distinct and separate skill to know how to structure a book, to know how to begin a book, to know how to make a book into a, a, a page turner. That is a distinct uh, skill set. And I'm going to call that the word wrangler. Uh, you can think of the Calgary Stampede. <laughs> <laughs> but the person whose life experience it is, whose business experience it is, whose insights it is, whose stories it is, who also has the stories of the clients or people that they've transformed or uh, changed their lives or changed their business, that is the author of the book. So I think we also do ourselves a disservice when we collapse those two things. And, and, and then somebody who's not a writer is staring at a blank page because that's maybe the worst way to write a book, <laughs> staring at a blank page. Well, and I think it becomes daunting, right? When you're trying to, like, I remember sitting there and, and not starting for so long because I was trying to think of the end result. And it wasn't until I heard just write and stop editing, like just yeah get it all out and then, and then see what you have. Because I realized I don't want to edit it. I want someone else to do that. Like, yeah, yeah. somebody else needs to do that. <laughs> somebody else needs to do that. Every writer needs an editor. Well, it's just like this podcast is yours, but that doesn't mean that you have to be the person to edit out when the sound's in you know, out of balance, or if one of us knocks the table, you know, your son can take that glitch out. Doesn't mean you have to be the person to upload it, you know, to Spotify and iTunes and YouTube. It's still your podcast though. Uh, but we have uh, collapsed those things and we do ourselves a disservice, but not only ourselves, the people who need our book, who need that wisdom, the people who are praying for like, Tanya, how did you go from 10 years ago, you know, to where you are now? I need to know right now before I kill myself. <laughs> You know, uh, maybe I'm exaggerating, but maybe not. Like, I think everybody has, somebody has, everybody has the answer 
that someone is praying for. And when you are a kind person, no matter how kind you are, you cannot deliver that message effectively to everybody else on the planet one at a time. <laughs> so well, it would be exhausting. It, in, <laughs> it would be exhausting. And, you know, you wouldn't always say it the best way. And, and it wouldn't always be the time that they can receive the message. I love books because they are like telepathy. They are, they can travel for thousands of miles and thousands of years even. But when the person opens the book at the time that they want the answer to that question, or they want some guidance or they want some inspiration, it's like an intimate conversation. And I, you know, I've been mentored by many people who are no longer alive, like Ralph Waldo Emerson and C.S. Lewis. Uh, Rumi, been dead a long time, <laughs> right? Uh, you know, and it's great to have live mentors and coaches as well. I mean, the, the, the business owners that you help, that's a different kind of intimate support when they get your consulting services. Um, but yeah, that's why I wrote my book, Turn Words Into Wealth. It's a blueprint for your business brand and book to create multiple streams of in-cap, impact and income. And so tell us a little bit about, tell us a little bit more about the book. Okay. So the book, Turn Words Into Wealth, which is going to be free when this is airing. Yes. So uh, you can go to Amazon or Apple or Kobo or wherever you like to get books and you can just Google or, uh, you know, put in the search Turn Words Into Wealth by Aurora Winter. It will be free July 13th through 18th. So grab your copy for free. It's also available as a soft cover book or hardcover book if you would like to write all over it like you and I like to do. Because I, you know, I'm on my massively transformative purpose. And my massively transformative purpose is to help others uh, stop belittling their value and to uh, write their books, you know, do their TED Talks, launch their business to the next level, raise capital, whatever the thing might be that they're hesitating to do because they haven't embraced who they are and the profound difference that they can make. And books, I think, are the highest leverage uh, tool that you can have in your toolkit as, a, as an entrepreneur. Now I forgot what the question was. <laughs> oh, tell us oh, more you're about, about book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I get so excited and then I go off on a tangent. Okay. So what I wanted to do in the book was show people how you can write your book and why it's valuable to build your brand and your business. So it's obviously most valuable immediately to people who already have a going business and then they can jump up to the next level. But it's also valuable to somebody who wants to grow a brand and a business, who wants to be Hollywood worthy or whatever you had said earlier, yeah. who, want, who has something to say. And there's so many value, so many different um, amazing values that you get from writing a book. There's the introspection, there's the uh, transformation of your life and business experience into, you know, gold nuggets for others. And there's the uh, transformation within your heart and soul as you transform those horrible dark nights of the soul <laughs> into something useful for other and you reclaim and sort of rewrite emotionally your, your past. And then there's the gift that you can leave as a legacy forever. So the book talks you through all of my mistakes. Well, maybe not all of them. That would take a longer book. <laughs> but <laughs> like you, I think that sharing our, our failures and hiccups is very helpful. Uh, and then it shares seven different proven models that people have used, including myself and my clients, to take their book and create seven figures of revenue with it or more. So it's very, I think it's a nice combination of practical and also full of stories, of course, because that's how people remember things. And it's got like the neuroscience of memorable communication, how to understand the neuroscience of communicating. But then it's got stories like how did Tim Ferriss ever get started with his with his books and podcasts? Did you know, for example, that the four hour work week, which was Tim Ferriss's first uh, book, uh, initially had a different title? It was something. No. Yeah, uh, I should have it memorized, but it was something like. Um, you know, how to have fun with drugs and sand or something like that. And Walmart refused to carry it if it had drugs. You know, he was being playful because he had a vitamin line at the time. Okay. Um, so most people don't know that he tested the title and, and used Google AdWords to do that. And they had 
multiple titles, and finally the four-hour work week was selected. Most people don't even know you can test a title. I always do this with my clients. Most people don't know that the four-hour work week, Tim Ferriss never thought the book would sell any copies whatsoever to speak of. And the book is designed as a lead magnet for his joint ventures and affiliate commissions. So, so, you know, when he's talking about in the four hour work week, he explains how to hire virtual assistants overseas. So there's some links, you know, to this company in India that does this or this other service that you might want to do. This, so he went to the trouble of, you know, getting uh, affiliate relationships with them, which costs nothing extra to the book reader who clicks on that link. But if they do hire a virtual assistant for the next year, perhaps he gets 10% of that. That could add up, right? So he wasn't banking on becoming wealthy. And how can everybody else learn from that message? Where can you create multiple streams of income? Where can you create multiple streams of impact? You know, and it's not just turn your words into wealth, it's turn your words into wonder, turn your words into wisdom, turn your words into contribution. Um, so the book shares, you know, Tim Ferriss' story, like Arianna Huffington's story with Huff, Huff Post. Um, my stories, some of them are, you know, kind of embarrassing, but hopefully they'll help others or I wouldn't be sharing them. And um, yeah, and, and my, the intention is the book is very inspirational and informational. So I mean, a lot of people don't know that Mel Robbins had a TED talk, uh, TEDx talk actually in, in San Francisco. And she has a lot of experience communicating. She, is a, uh, she was a broadcast host, I think, uh, TV, radio, definitely radio, maybe TV. So she had a lot of experience speaking and she gave a TEDx talk in San Francisco and she almost forgot to say this line. But at the end, she finally remembered and she went, oh yeah, and I have this five second rule which helped me break my patterns. And so she would count down like she was inspired by the NASA uh, liftoff. So she used that as a pattern interrupt five, four, three, two, one, get out of bed, Mel, make that phone call, Mel, you know, stop, stop um, drinking. <laughs> because at the time she was, she and her husband were on the verge of bankruptcy. They had gone through some difficult times, which she explains, and she was down. She was depressed. She wasn't getting up early enough. So she watched the NASA, which millions of people, billions of people, uh, you know, billions of views of the NASA uh, takeoff, but she managed to go, ha, huh, I'm going to use that. Five, four, three, two, one. She used it in her own life. She mentioned it on her TEDx talk. She almost forgot. And that was what made her TEDx talk go viral. It now has got over 20 million views. And then she said, oh, people really like that. I'm going to write the five second rule book, which she self-published. Right. Most people don't know that the most um, the most lucrative self-published author is J.K. Rowling. Right. No, I didn't know that. Most people don't know that. She earns maybe $40 million a year because she retained the electronic rights. She retained audiobooks and eBooks. Clever lady. So, uh, and my, and uh, another amazingly successful author, David Goggins, who self-published his book, Can't Hurt Me, he says the worst advice that he ever got was when he talked to a New York agent and the New York agent said, if you self-publish your book, you'd be lucky to sell 5,000 copies. But he decided to self-publish anyway because he didn't want somebody else to own his life story. He didn't want to be controlled in that way. And then he went on a bunch of podcasts and in the first year, he sold over a million copies of his book and 600,000 copies of the audiobook, primarily by being on podcasts like yours. And I mean, if he had gone with a New York publisher, there would have been a several year delay and it would have cost him, I'm guessing here, but maybe $20 million. So what am I trying to say here? I'm trying to say, well, I wanted to bust a whole bunch of myths and bring people up to speed with where publishing is today. And even in the time that I've been publishing books, like my first book was published in 2005 and it was endorsed by Dr. Wayne Dyer, my hero. Um, there were so many difficulties that you, so many things you couldn't do, but now there's so many ways you can work with people around the world to edit your book, to ghostwrite your book. You can work with a book shepherd like myself, or sometimes I even ghostwrite books. Um, and you can publish on Amazon, on Kobo, on Apple books, on other places, and actually self-published books, which are now 
primarily called indie published books, are outselling the traditionally published books. Okay, and one more thing is just like, if you look at any industry, you'll see that systematically the middleman is being taken out of the equation. I mean, I book my, uh, my accommodation directly on Airbnb or directly on whatever uh, thing I'm using. I don't usually use a travel agent. I, I can't remember the last time I've used a travel agent. And that's what is shaking up every single industry. But most people don't know that and they don't think about that with books and they think, oh, I need to get an agent. I need to get a big publisher and who's going to listen to me. And because I'm not already famous, I might as well just give up now. So read, yeah. if you read Turn Words into Wealth Blueprint for your business brand and book, you will not have those old myths hold you back because I systematically bust them and share stories and of successes. Well, and I'm grateful that you do because it, it's funny when you were saying that, that just this last piece, I was thinking about this writing retreat that I was at and they asked um, if, if you could have your pick of any publishing house, what would it be? And of course, everybody was throwing all of these names out and it got to me. They were like, and what about you? And I'm like, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. Yeah. <laughs> and they're like the little symbol that's at the bottom of the book. And I'm like, don't pay attention. And they're like, really? And I'm like, no. And I read a lot, but I could like, for me personally, I was like, I felt in the moment, I was like, oh my God, like I should know this. If I'm wanting to be an author, <laughs> this seems like something I know, but I was like, I don't care who printed the book. I care what's in the book. I care what's printed in the book. I care about what the message is. So, but there was a part of me that was like, gosh, maybe I'm not ready if I was, you know, if I, if I don't know this or right. So I was like, Oh, like I found even myself of going, no, I needed to take a step back and go, you know, I need to weigh the pros and cons of both publishing versus self-publishing. Cause like you said, there are different avenues and we have to be open to those and not think, well, this is the way everybody tells me I need to do it, which I've never followed. <laughs> 20 <laughs> You and I are like that way. We're like, make our own path. We're like, yeah, just because everybody always does it that way does not mean that's the best way to do it. Well, 25 years ago, that would have been right. But things have changed. But if you, you know, you're, most people are not in the indie publishing world. So, you know, their thoughts are from a generation ago. Things have changed so rapidly. Things continue to change. But as a business owner, or if you even think you might have a business, why would you give away your lead magnet for 75 years? That is the typical traditionally published book length of contract is they, really? would, own, they would own the rights to exploit that material for 75 years. And if you're not careful, it'll say, and all other you know, expressions, which would be eBooks, audiobooks, uh, stage plays, I don't know, whatever. So why would you do that and also forfeit 90% of the revenue and give up control and create multiple year delay when, when if you approach it professionally and you get an editor and you get a professional book designer and you have somebody who knows how to structure a book, you know, look at it or help you structure it right, why would you give up all of those things if you're a proactive creative entrepreneur like somebody like you would totally be sabotaged by having a publisher. Of course, I am opinionated on this topic because, you know, you can control it yourself. The really cool thing is with a, um, an independent or self-published book, you could just go on Amazon and, and, and they have great service, but you can also go wide, which is another decision, which is I'm going wide with my um, Turn Words into Wealth, my most recent book, which is my sixth, sixth, that's hard to say, published <laughs> book. And I've also written a ton of screenplays. So I've been down this path multiple times. Um, so what, but what are some of the other benefits of being indie published? It means like if you, uh, you publish your book and then three months later you decide, oh, I really want to focus on um, this consulting, you know, expanding your consulting company. And I have this new thing that I'm doing, or I have a new podcast that I'm doing. And I, oh gosh, Ah, it would have been so great if I had a link to that URL and told people about that in my book. Well, if you're indie published or self-published, you just go, not a problem. Let me just add that to the, you know, the, the, the book, upload the new PDF instantly. People will know about your new course, your new offer, your new YouTube channel, whatever the link is. 
or, and this will probably happen. You find a typo. You're like, only <laughs> I hadn't printed 10,000 copies that are in my garage with that typo. Ah, oh, I feel terrible. Not a problem. You just fix the typo, upload, and instantly, you know, people will get Which the is one. the weird thing that happens because now <laughs> I find typos when usually I wouldn't pay attention, but now I'm like, oh, this wasn't supposed to be this word. <laughs> yeah, I know that that it's a bad habit I have. It reduces my enjoyment. Um, now, there are some kinds of, of, of exceptions where you might want to consider uh, going with a publishing house. I'm not, although I sound very... Um, opinionated. I am opinionated. As an entrepreneur, you want to self-publish. Absolutely. 99% of the time. I can't, you know, unless you're on your deathbed and you're not going to. Um, if you are publishing fantasy and you already have, you know, three books written, maybe you want to see if Tor or some other fantasy publisher is, is going to shepherd that for you. If you have zero business and zero marketing and are not going to push it. But the problem is when you go with a publisher, you still have to do all the marketing. Right. And I think that's one thing where people get stuck, right? They're like, okay, I have this idea. I know I can, you know, I can write the book. I can, you know, but then it's like, now I need an editor and, you know, and then they get stuck in that minutia of, I don't feel like I have enough followers. I don't, you know, and then all of those other questions sort of come into, well, into well, play. Well, one, one step at a time, the, um, you know, I've been helping people uh, publish their books since 2015. So it's, you know, I've had a front row seat on how things are changing. Uh, but my most recent thing that, and I have, you know, writing courses that people can take at, a, at an affordable price point, but I also help um, people who want help with the creation part of their book. Cause I'm like, okay, these are the sticking points that I notice people have time and time again. How about if I just solve them? <laughs> and in the book, Turn Words Into Wealth, it gives you a 10 point blueprint that you can follow to do this yourself. But how, and, and it's what I do. <laughs> and it's what most journalists do. But, you know, most people don't understand that most books are growth written if they're by a business leader, like Gary Vaynerchuk, who's, you know, very popular uh, in the business space. He's like, yeah, of course I ghost, have a ghostwriter work. I'm not ashamed of it. Like, duh, obviously. But what, what I do is I, I look at the person's business. I see what is the low hanging fruit or who their ideal client is to make this more tangible. For example, I worked with a dentist in San Diego um, doctors, Janice and Justine Dunn. And I learned, I learned about dentistry. I learned that like the average, you know, the average patient comes in and spends a couple hundred bucks. But if you get somebody who's over 40, they can spend 5,000 or $10,000 because they need crowns. They need whitening. They need this, they need that. They've, uh, perhaps need a lot more work and the average, you know, uh, between a couple hundred dollars and a couple thousand dollars, you know, that's a 10 X or 20 X more valuable to have a client over 40. So with armed with that understanding of their business, I suggested, why don't we write a book called keys to a healthy smile after 40. And then the subtitle is seven secrets to feeling seven years younger. And here I'm plugging their book. So you might want to check that out. And the result was I, and then I interviewed them. They are, English is not their first language. They're from Vietnam. They had this really cool personal backstory of um, getting to America from Vietnam. That's like just an amazing story of harrowing difficulties. Mm -hmm. But the book is leading with, you know, keys to a healthy smile after 40. And their business went from 1.5 to $6 million. Wow. Because they positioned as the go-to experts for people over 40 and boom, their business increased and they got more clear about how to communicate, but they did not write a single word. I interviewed them and then I took the transcription of the audio and or video and, you know, turned that into a book. I had my team, you know, make it all polished and tighten it up and, and put it in the right sequence and then shared it with them. And they, they broke into tears of joy when they got their book. Then they said, like, they gave it to their mom and dad who had sacrificed so much to help them get to America. And it was just like, it was such a profound moment in their life because it was like, you know, we made it mom and dad and we have a book now and you made this happen. So, um, so that's an example. So I call that spoken author. And that's what I do with my clients primarily 
but you can do this yourself. You could have a friend interview you, or you could, you know, talk. It's easier if you have somebody talk to you because it's much more alive. Right. So there's, there, there's more than one way to write a book. <laughs> well, and I think people get stuck on that, right? Like uh, that they have an idea, but I, you know, that they, they think I'm not a writer or, you know, I don't really know how to make this make sense. Um, so I love that idea of that, you know, somebody can just tell the story, um, yeah. you know, because it's, it's true. Even when I write something and I write a story and I'll give it to somebody, if I give it to my husband who is not, will never be editing anything that I do. Usually he just hands me the paper and goes, can you just read it? Cause it's way more entertaining when you just <laughs> read it than if I read it myself. And I'm like, well, because I get animated about it. And he's like, yeah, just, just read it. So I'm yeah. like, that's an audible book guy right there. Let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, an audio is definitely the way to go. Most people, I mean, I love books, but how did stories start? Stories started around the campfire. People would tell each other stories. Why? Stories contain the DNA of humanity's wisdom. Stories are the that. DNA of humanity's wisdom. Stories matter. Stories were not initially written down or typed up. <laughs> You know, the Gutenberg print and printing press was not even invented until it was 1460. So uh, uh, it's easier to talk out your story. So why not do it that way? <laughs> the yeah. other benefit is, the other cool benefit of the spoken author method that I do with my clients, uh, but you could do this too, is then we have got all these audio and video. So, you know, we, we make a structure for the book. For example, we want to focus on keys to a healthy smile after 40, or we want to focus on what are the benefits of collaboration. We want to position you as the go-to expert on collaborating in small business, for example. Then maybe we decide, okay, there's 10 chapters because we want to address these different things, small business, medium business, when collaboration goes terribly wrong, what to do instead, you know, how to write your, your contracts and samples, go to the, your website and download your samples, whatever. Um, but then it's we good to know that I'm on the right track. There you <laughs> go. I'm like, check, check, check. <laughs> yeah, yeah. See, I, I, I get you. Um, but then we would have a live podcast like interview, and I would interview you for each one of these chapters. You'd know what chapter is coming up. So you'd be researching it and thinking about it for the week before. And then we have the rough draft of your of your chapter. Well, that's very cool because it's transcribed and then we get the messy first draft. But and the super great thing is then you have video and audio because the, the other mistake that people make is they like put all this effort into their book and then they publish, hit publish on Amazon and then nothing happens <laughs> because they haven't mentioned to anybody that their book is coming out. It's a secret, right? You don't want to be the best kept secret. So what I do uh, three months prior to the book being launched is we slice and dice that audio and video or the client can do it and put, you know, one minute segment uh, here, a five minute segment there, let me, maybe a whole podcast somewhere else. And then people are like, oh, Tanya's got a book coming out about collaboration. And I heard, you know, I heard a podcast with her and Aurora or her and somebody else about it. And that was like just the rough draft of a chap. I really want, I got to get the book. Then they can pre-order the book. Um, so most ghost writers or journalists in, up until recently, they would write by interviewing the person. And then three years later, the book would come out. Right. I'm like, how about we do it a better way? But, and then three years later, the person would have to go on talk shows. And by that time they're on to something else. And they're like, really, this is old news for me. <laughs> so I'm like, while well, the person's excited about it and alive and they're, 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 they're discovering it. It's on the leading edge of their thinking, record those audios and videos. And then you've got, instead of one book coming out, you've got one book plus 200 pieces of content, video, audio coming out. And then boom, Tanya's launched not only as an author and as a thought leader, but all these other podcasts, radio and TV want you. When they want you to speak on the TED stage and they, they want you because like, it's like a whole bunch. It's a properly planned book launch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's an idea. <laughs> right. And I think that that's something sometimes people don't think of, right? They go, well, I just write the book. And then people buy the book. Yeah. You know, um, and, you know, or the fear 
um, of, you know, cause I heard like tons of people go, well, I don't want to have like 10,000 books sitting in my basement. And I'm yeah. like, oh, if I ever write a book, that's all anybody's ever getting. <laughs> that's your gift. No, whether you want it or not. But again, also I think people need to keep in mind that of really understanding why it is that you're writing it. And I like that you had, you know, had mentioned that before is, um, you know, there's those that are writing a book because, you know, it's a story that they just, you know, want to share, but those that are also writing a book that have a story, but they're also using it calculating like you, you know, when you had mentioned the four hour work week of the idea of it was to drive people to different places. Um, yeah. and you just never know. I mean, I'm sure like you had said, he wasn't expecting that, that it, that that's what it was going to do. Like that wasn't right. its intended purpose. Right. And I think we can all, you know, be inspired by that example, you know, in the book, uh, turn words into wealth. I taught, I share, you know, seven different models to make seven figures with your book. None of those models are by selling books. <laughs> right. That would be maybe model number eight. Right. Okay. You know, like when you sell a book, you make a couple of bucks, you have to sell a lot of books to make a million dollars. But if you use your book as a lead magnet to fill your business, you probably don't need to sell that many books. I mean, I've had, I've had people, there's a difference between warm leads and cold leads, which I'm sure you're familiar with. So cold leads, Amazon is the number three search engine. So if you have some expertise and you don't have a book on Amazon, you're missing out on all the people who would be searching for the answer to the problem that you solve. So I've had people I don't know who I didn't hand them an autographed copy of a book who are not a friend of a client or a friend of a friend, don't know me whatsoever, buy my book on Amazon because it's properly marketed read the book, call me, and then their next investment is six figures. Right. So to go from zero to six figures because they bought a book for 20 bucks, this is a good business model. Now, right. not all my clients have to come up with six figures. I do have, you know, less expensive offers, but um, you'd have to sell, you know, a hundred thousand books ish to make six figures. And that's six figures. But if 10 people do that, I already have seven figures. Right. So you can afford to give books away. Yeah. Also, my first book, my first published book, because uh, I wrote some that were not worthy of being published, uh, <laughs> uh, From Heartbreak to Happiness, I have thousands of those books still in somebody's storage because I delegated the distribution. But Dr. Wayne Dyer endorsed the book just after it was printed, 3,000 copies, $10,000 or something printed, beautiful book. Then I had to stick on his endorsement, right? But nowadays the way to go is print on demand. You can get print on demand books, which means, as I said, if you change, you, you fix a typo or you add, hey, I'm doing this, you wanna know about it, go to this new website. Um, the next person who orders your book gets that correction. Yeah. And if they've ordered an ebook and if they up, uh, update it, they will get the updated one. So that's so cool. You don't have to, you know, spend $10,000 for a print run of books. You can just print them one at a time. <laughs> yeah. Which is, which is a novel idea. And I think, you know, can be inspiring to a lot of people who are, you know, sitting there going, well, I can't, you know, I can't imagine how my family would feel with boxes and boxes of books. Well, yeah. You, of the you same probably, book, I should say. Of the same yeah, book. you probably <laughs> want to keep your garage to park your car in or your snowmobile or whatever the case may be, your bicycles. Um, well, my sister-in-law, Wendy Winter, she had this idea for a book for 17 years. But when she met me, if you hang around me or you just listen to this podcast, you'll probably be writing a book because that's my, my impact on people, my influence. So she's like, Ah, well, I've had this idea for 17 years, but yeah, I don't know how to get an agent or get a publisher. I'm like, don't do it that way. <laughs> you know, yeah. So before you know it, we had an illustrator for her book. She's got this great book. I helped her a bit with the marketing and helped her apply for book awards. Her book is a, is a children's book. It's already won four awards. It's called Where's My Joey? It's available around the globe in multiple languages. So she's having it translated into French, Italian, German, Arabic, last thing she told me. Um, and she was so grateful. She dedicated her book to me. She said it would never have, would have happened, you know, without my help. Um, just because I 
you know, I knew things that she didn't know and it'd take her a long time to learn those things. And I'm helping another children's author. Michelle Wang is her name. She lives in Tirana. Ah. For those of you who are not from Tirana. Um, <laughs> and her book is called It Must Be Autumn. And, and it's just a delightful book. And so then I said, well, you got to do the other seasons. I talked to her yesterday. She's like, well, I've almost got winter written. You know, so now she's going to do all four seasons. And the difference in return on, return on investment if she only has books, she's a, she's a teacher, so she doesn't have her own business yet, although she hangs around me. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> but having four books, one for each season, just made sense, but she didn't think of it. But that's going to be much more of a service. And then she's always got a book that's in the right season. Uh, we found an illustrator for a fantastic price. You know, So it's, it's really fun. And you, there's so many stillborn ideas that people had. 20 years ago, 15 years ago. Oh, my mother-in-law, uh, once removed, my brother's mother-in-law, she just turned 92. And she read the, 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 the proof copy of Turn Words into Wealth. And she pulled out a manuscript that she had had 25 years she'd, ago she'd written. And, you know, that time you had to get an agent, etc. And now she's editing it and she's going to publish it as a book. I'm like, this book is working. Turn words into wealth is encouraging people. So <laughs> I like that. that. Well, and I think, you know, that's the wonderful, to me, that's the wonderful thing about books is that, you know, oftentimes I've picked up a book and then, and said it to somebody, like given it to somebody going, you have to read this. This is amazing. Like all of this advice. And then they're like, you know, this book was written in like 1989. And I'm like, yeah. I don't care. It's still relevant. Like, and I think that's exactly. the beauty of the written word is, is like you, you know, you had mentioned this before is sometimes you pick up a book and, um, it might, you know, you might've moved completely on with your life. <laughs> so you're not even on that path anymore, but you just never know when or how the impact is going to happen to a person. So books, I think those stories are important to share. Books can change people's lives. And here's a story from a slightly different perspective. Um, because of who I am, I tend to interview people and, and record it. So my mother was, was failing, fading kind of. Um, so I interviewed her multiple times and, and found out her history, just like you were saying. It's like, what? You did that? Really? That's amazing. What? You, you know, remember when you got your first electricity? She told me all these really great stories. Um, and when she died in, you know, a few months later, I was really grateful for two things. One, I was grateful that I was there when she took her last breath because she was there when I took my first breath. But I was also so grateful that I have, you know, all those interviews and I won't be losing all of those amazing stories and the details of them. I shared the audios already with my family, but I can turn that into a book. It's like so important to me because I vaguely remember her stories, but I wouldn't remember the year or the names of the people or you know, the details that make it so real. So, you know, a book can be part of, of, of honoring somebody else or yourself or your legacy. I think it, you know, I think the most valuable thing we can give to others is the things that we would share with our best friends or our close family members, you know, which are those trials that you somehow managed to survive that dark night of the soul. And this is how, you know, that can, that can help somebody else. And I love that. I think that's, you know, it's, it's one of the reasons I started this podcast and, you know, um, I think it's, it's one of the reasons that, uh, you know, it had so attracted me to you is that I always think, you know, there's so many people that I meet and then, you know, they say, well, it must be nice or whatever. And I'm like, oh, sweetie, do not be jaded to think that there are not still nights where I'm like gulping down haagen crying in the middle of my carpet, wondering, you know, how I could have been such a colossal failure, um, <laughs> you know, and like, oh my God, like, this is just like horrible. What am I doing? What am I thinking? And then, you know, the next day I'm, you know, back on the top of the world again. And I'm like, look at me world. Like I'm going to take you by storm. And I started to realize that, I needed to share those stories. I was keeping them all inside. And I wasn't realizing that by sharing that, I was actually inspiring somebody else to, you know, stand up from the carpet, the ice cream yeah. coma, you know, and, and to move on. And I think sharing stories is such an important part of lives and with technology and everything that's, that's, and I shouldn't say this because I'm kind of cutting my own foot off, but with technology and everything that's out there, 
we've stopped sharing those stories. We've stopped, you know, having those moments. And when I even think to my, you know, I have a 14 year old son and some of our best memories are just sitting around sharing stories of stupid things I did when I was a kid or whatever. And, and just being able to relate with him of him going, you don't understand. Let me tell you, like I had, (laughs) you know, your father was the one younger who was straight and narrow. Your mother was not (laughs) ask anybody in the family. They are surprised that I didn't end up pregnant and drugs are in jail. Like that was really the life path. Right. But it was, I was realizing that, you know, here's all of these stories and these experiences and sharing them was creating a connection I never thought of. And so I love that you're encouraging people to, to be that change in someone else's life. Even if it means that it's one person that reads that book to me, one life changed is an incredible feat. Exactly right. Well, social media is so often airbrushed and tidied up and you only see the top of the world moments. You don't see the crying on the carpet with the haagen moments, which we all freaking have, right? <laughs> and so then it creates a discouragement. And I think that's one of the reasons why social media is associated with depression. The more you use it, the more depressed you get. So <laughs> read books instead. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, or, and um, I love what Joanna Penn said. So I want to uh, acknowledge that she's the one who said this first, as far as I know, she said, like, double down on being human. We will never be perfect. And you know what? What if perfect is not the goal? Technology can calculate things faster. You can 3D print an ankle, you know, and technology can make things perfect. But what if artisan, what if handmade, heart made is what is most valuable? And so Let's lean into doubling down on being human, which means handmade, heart made. It means the beauty is in the perfections, not the plastic perfection. That's everybody gets the same one, right? So we can do that with our books, with our podcasts, with our being. And when you shared, I mean, I love the beginning of your podcast where you're like, I'm going to share my failures. Also a few successes, something like that. It's like, oh, I love this woman already. Um, (laughs) You know, we give permission when we're willing to share our dark night of the soul and our moments where we almost gave up, or maybe we did give up, but then our husband hugged us or our brother hugged us and we kept on going and it all turned out well in the end. It it not only tells people, well, if I keep on going, it could turn out well in the end, but it also gives them permission that if they're sitting there with a hug and doss, that's okay. This too will pass. It's just scary, right? I mean, my first published book, which is called From Heartbreak to Happiness, actually is my intimate diary of healing after my husband died suddenly at the age of 33, when our son was four. And I am a Leo, which means I am somewhat proud. Okay, drop the somewhat. And (laughs) I like to, you know, have a, a happy, optimistic impact on people. So I struggled with airbrushing my diary And I'm like, this is not going to be the gift that I want it to be. If somebody reads this diary and goes, I can't even grieve, right? I'm going to jump off the bridge. That will have been a disservice. So I didn't clean it up. So, you know, metaphorically, there's like dark mascara and there's snot coming out of my nose on some of the pages, but it's real. And that's why Dr. Wayne Dyer endorsed it. He said, I read every page of this beautiful diary. It moved my heart and I think it will move yours, something like that. And, um, and I, I actually pressed publish, or I had 3,000 copies published, um, thinking, I think everybody's going to hate me for this book. But if one woman who has, a, uh, you know, that similar situation with, a, you know, her be- best friend and business partner and husband died suddenly and unexpectedly, and she's got a small child, if one person reads it and they hold on. And they know they can go from heartbreak to happiness too, because I did, and I was just as low as they are. It's worth it. And that book has actually helped a whole bunch of people. And I didn't even know at the time, because I was so inexperienced and naive, I didn't understand that it would help people in dealing with other heartbreaks, like a divorce or the loss of a job, or even who were on their deathbed, or even the death of a pet, because the emotional journey was similar and I think that book has probably saved some lives, but certainly saved some moments of despair. So it was worth it. Yeah. And I love that. I think it's such a key thing for, you know, people to really latch onto is that, you know, your experience 
no matter how many other people were in, you know, in that room or in that time is so unique because of the emotion that we all, we all carry. And, and that's true. Even if you just look in your family, you know, I look at my brother and I go, were we raised in the same house? <laughs> like, I'm pretty sure we went through this, but his recollection of our childhood is completely different than mine. Right. And I'm like, we did exactly the same things. I'm not really too sure what's going on, but you know, I think that, you know, whether you're writing fiction or whether you're writing nonfiction, I think there is that, you know, component that really nobody can tell a story like, like you can, because it's your story. It's your emotion. And that's another good tip for writing or or speaking is don't airbrush it. Don't, don't make it average. Don't make it, you, you know, make it instead specific and unique because the more specific and unique your voice, your story is actually surprisingly, the more it will resonate with more people. So when we try to make something that appeals to everybody, it appeals to nobody. But I, you know, I, each book I write with specific reader in mind and, uh, and then it, you know, it appeals to many people. But if I tried to write a book that everybody would read, you know, nobody would want to read it. Right. So I, I think, and I think that's reassuring because we can all tell our own stories, right? You know your story. Just be you. Double down on being human. <laughs> yeah, I love that. So tell us all the ways that people, if there's someone out there and they're just like, oh, she's my people. I need, I need help. I need, I need something. <laughs> Where do they go to find, to, to talk you more? Well, Tanya, it's been so fun doing this podcast with you. You are so awesome. Um, well, this podcast is coming out July 13th. So go to Amazon or Apple Books or Kobo or wherever you like to get your books and grab a free copy of the ebook of my latest book, which is called Turn Words Into Wealth. It's by Aurora Winter, A-U-R-O-R-A, Winter. So you should be able to uh, search it or I'm sure Tanya will put a link so that you can, you can get it. Um, Turn Words Into Wealth blueprint for your business brand and book. Um, so grab that. If you would like more, then please give a thumbs up to this podcast with Tanya, because if you help her share her message, that will also help me. And besides, we love her. So she's awesome. I am uh, mostly a, a writer and, uh, and a mentor and a trainer. So I'm not all over social media, but the easiest way to reach me is to DM me on LinkedIn. And my LinkedIn is linkedin.com slash in slash my name, Aurora Winter, A-U-R-O-R-A-W-I-N-T-E-R. -E no S, just one. <laughs> <laughs> I know that people like to give me a free S, but it's all right. There's only one of me and we don't need the S. So, um, and I'd love to uh, connect with you. If you are interested in getting help writing your book, then as you'll read in my book, Turn Words Into Wealth, you can schedule a, a call with me or somebody on my team and we'll, we'll talk you through, see if you have a book idea that we could help you with and uh, tell you about our, our training or our ghostwriting services or other ways that we could help that make dream come true more easily and effortlessly. But honestly, I put a lot, I put decades of what I've learned into the book, Turn Words Into Wealth and you can get it for free. So uh, grab your copy. July 13th to 17th. It's free. I'm excited. I and already have my copy. Expensive. Yeah, I already oh, have yeah. my copy. <laughs> so <laughs> I can tell you it's very, very interesting. I'm not all the way through it, but um, yeah. So we'll make sure that we have all of the links of quickly where you can find her as well as the links to the, some of the books that she mentioned as well. I'm going to add those on there too, because I'm curious about them as well. So, and my website is, is my name, aurorawinter.com. So oh, I'm glad that you found it interesting so far. That I is did. Thank you so much for coming on Aurora. Thank you, Tanya. I got to tell you guys, I loved Aurora's book so much. I'm on my second read of it. Um, it was just such a refreshing thing to find a quality resource available on how it is that you get your message out there. I love that she shares her experiences and her expertise in the book. Um, it's filled with insightful stories and great advice. Her message is so clear and concise throughout the whole book, and it's just really fun to read. So I really encourage you to head out. Remember that for this week only, the book is 
free. So make sure that you rush out and that you pick up this book. Don't forget to give her a review um, on Amazon because that definitely helps her. And while you're throwing reviews out there, I would love it if you could take time to review our show as well because that just helps us to reach more people. But I think that what happens a lot of times is that we all feel that we have a story, but we make excuses. I know I did that. Um, And I finally just decided to go, you know what? No more excuses. It's time that I actually get this onto paper into a book. It's one goal that I've always wanted to do. So it's time to do something about it. And Aurora's book really helped me to sort of get fired up again and get super excited about it and continue that writing full strength. So if you need that inspiration, if you need that fire to be lit, Aurora's book is the one that is going to do it for you. On next week's episode, I'm going to be talking to you all about how I screwed up. So I promised you that I would always talk about the good, the bad, and the motivational. And that's what next week's episode is going to be about. I'm going to talk to you about the good thing I did that turned into a bad thing that turned into something that became quite motivational. So I'm going to tell you how I screwed up and how I figured it out and how I went about fixing it. So I hope you'll tune in next week. I'm excited about that episode and I hope you learn a little bit something from it. So don't forget, you can also head to our website at foxtalksbusiness.ca, click on blogs on the left-hand side of the page. You will see this episode, all of the links to get Aurora's book, as well as other ways that you can connect with her. She's an amazing person. And I got to tell you, I had so much fun even before and after we talked for almost half an hour on this interview. So I'm really excited to stay connected with her. She's definitely an amazing, amazing woman. So thank you so much, Aurora, for spending time with me and just being the amazing human being that you are. You are definitely changing lives, mine included. So no matter what you're doing today, whether you're writing your very first word or your 20th thousand word, make sure that you take time to have fun. Because as I always say, if you're not having fun, why are you doing it? I'm Tanya Fox, and you're listening to Fox Talks Business Podcast. I started my career in the corporate world, but always played to my own tune and loved to think outside of the box. This didn't always serve me well with the bosses, so I made the decision to become an entrepreneur. And that little seed of entrepreneurial curiosity continued to grow as I branched out into retail, service, and franchise businesses. Now, I have been fortunate to have amazing successes in the last two decades, but they did not come without some really big failures and even bigger lessons learned. And that's why I started this podcast, not just to share the failures, but to show you how you can turn every failure into a success. We're going to hear from some amazing humans from around the world that are going to share their stories of the good, the bad, and the motivational entrepreneurial life has to offer. After all, life is too short to make all of the mistakes yourself. So why not learn from each other? And of course, we're going to have some fun because as I always say, well, you know what? I'll tell you that at the end of the episode. So thank you so much for coming on the show today, Aurora. I'm so excited to speak with you. Well, likewise, Tanya, and I'm looking forward to helping your audience write their book. Yes. So this has been, you know, we were talking a little bit about this off air and, uh, you know, I definitely want to get into this, but before we get into, you know, writing a book, who should do it, tell us a little bit about your background and sort of how you got to here. Okay. Well, like many would be authors, I have always been passionate about books. I remember, you know, when I was nine years old reading C.S. Lewis's Narnia series and that changed my life. 